Welcome to Total War Warhammer 3. Now I refer you to the uh, prologue series that I have published on my channel if you are interested in uh, things like options and uh, also for the intro video of the game. Which, uh, it's a very good video so I recommend watching that. Again, thank you so much to Creative Assembly for providing me with a press key for the game. Now, in this series, we are going to play the campaign. And I was thinking that we would play as um, Grand Cathay. But uh, before that, let's, uh, let's do the video on this specific series. But for a series that I do after this, I will just skip the videos uh, that we've already seen. So I will only play the introduction video for uh, the faction itself the first time I play the faction, mind you. For that, let's have a little look at the video. This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic turned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fate drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him, yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became executioner. Single shot, bound in faith forsaken, pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here in the north? Is he alive? Wounded and dying. Embraces in shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Bellacor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse, ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos, and I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All routes have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah, the tome unveils a spell to summon a portal. One to bypass the Maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally. One who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. One wonders why the Order factions would be tempted by the power of the god bear. The Chaos factions, that's different. But yes, Grand Cathay. There hasn't really been much lore uh, around for Cathay before this game. 
Uh, there have been references to it in uh, the Warhammer lore, but um, I think there have been a couple of uh, like mercenary units for the tabletop version. But Cathay and uh, Nippon, which would be Japan, uh, have always been somewhat of a mystery in uh, in the Warhammer lore. And I don't know if uh, if uh, Games Workshop ever intended to uh, to flesh out Grand Cathay at all, but uh, they did so for this game, and uh, the result is. Uh, Quite interesting, I would say. So past the mountains of Morn and the steppes beyond lies the fabled empire of Cathay. Travelers returning from the eastern reaches tell tales of jade cities and golden pagodas. They recount strange creatures from serpentine dragons to monolithic stone sentinels and flying sky junks that rain multi-hued firepower from up above. But most of all, they tell of the imposing and disciplined armies that march forth in defense of their kingdom. The thousands of devoted foot soldiers, unswerving in their loyalty and unrivaled in the harmonics of war. But their armies face northwards to garrison the great bastion and defend it against the ruinous powers is perhaps a blessing. For, should the celestial dragon emperor have to turn his legions toward the nations of the west, the threat to all that may be unleashed does not bear thinking about. Cathay has harmony, where you need to balance both yin and yang to achieve harmony, which will confer powerful effects. They have the uh, compass, where you can direct the Wuxing compass to defend Cathay from threats north of the Great Bastion. And they have the Ivory Road, where you gain wealth by sending out caravans to deliver cargo to faraway cities in the west. And with that, let's move on to the uh, leader selection. A dragon. From human Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, reigns across northern Cathay and commands the armies of the Great Bastion. Cold and aloof, she has ruled over the northern provinces for centuries and maintains the defences with strength of arms and wondrous war machines. But the Great Bastion is the shield that protects Cathay from the ruinous powers of the north, and while it stands strong, so too does Cathay prosper. Miao Ying's faction effects are minus two corruption, plus ten leadership when fighting against demons of chaos, and plus twenty percent ammunition for missile units. Her personal lord effects are 50% less um, upkeep for missile infantry units in her army, and she has a personal harmony of 3 yin. Now her brother, Master of Fire. Metal. This is Xiaoming, the Iron Dragon. He rules over Western Cathay and the Sky Road that leads into the Mountains of Morn. A hardened frontier warrior, he maintains the western edge of the Empire and keeps the desert clans in order. An interest in alchemy has led to the presence of sorcerous cabals in Xiaoming's realm, yet his siblings claim that his proximity to the Great Moor might have somehow poisoned his mind. His faction effects would be 20% more cargo for the caravans, all alchemists are recruited at plus 5 levels, 25% less upkeep for ogre mercenary units, 15 armor for all melee units, that is rather nice. His personal effects is 100% uh, increase in magic item drop chance, 25% less upkeep for melee units, and he has a harmony of plus 3 yang. But I want to play as Miao Ying. And since I am not Legend of Total War and I'm not used to this game at all, um, currently I I'm going to go with uh, easy, um, but normal battle difficulty because that's fine. Um, I don't remember exactly. They, they have changed. They haven't changed the um, the uh, modifiers the AI gets on easy, but they have changed the modifiers they get on hard and very hard. Um, 
If you want to watch someone play this at uh, maximum skill, then I do recommend Legend of Total War. Uh, he's on YouTube, uh, and I uh, watch his videos quite often. Uh, there's also Zerkovic, um, and of course there are other uh, content creators. Um, as I get more used to the game and the systems, I will probably move up towards normal and then probably hard slash very hard. But legendary is not my kind of uh, thing. I don't like the fact that you cannot manually save and orders cannot be issued when uh, a battle is paused. It... As I've mentioned in other videos of other games, I play to relax and have fun and that kind of, um, of uh, challenge from a game where the game dominates you if you're not extremely skilled. Um, I don't have time to specialize that much in a game. I mean, it's natural that Legend of Total War always plays on Legendary very hard because he plays Total War a lot and he is really good at it. Uh, I don't play it that much. So, I mean, he has more than 10,000 hours in uh, Total War Warhammer 2, whereas I have barely surpassed 1,000. But yes, easy, normal. Um, don't flame me in the comments for that, please. Um, I'm playing to have fun, and I'm also playing to show you guys the game and so forth. So, easy, normal it is. Map. This is the map for uh, Total War Warhammer 3. Down here is the Empire. Uh, this is Norska. These are the Chaos Wastes. These are the... Um, Darklands, I think. Uh, these are the um, the mountains that is mentioned in Xiao Ming's uh, description, uh, and this is Cathay up here. Uh, settings: um, you can now set incremental auto saves. Uh, how many uh, it should keep? Uh, I I go with twenty five. Uh, the default here is sixty minutes time limit, but I always turn that off. Uh, I have the advice frequency at minimum. Um, I heard the advisor speak, so yeah. But yep, let's have a look at Miao Ying's introduction video. Grand Cathay, a vast empire to the east, ruled by powerful creatures, dragons, who can inhabit human form. You are gravely mistaken. We have no interest in a mere god's power. No interest in power to use against the forces of chaos? I am Yao Yi, the Storm Dragon. Older than the gods themselves. You are here for a greater purpose. This map shows the energy of all things. There should be harmony, but the world is unbalanced. My younger sister, Shenzhou, bringer of light and hope. She ventured beyond the Norskan mountains was lost. Without her, without her light, darkness prevails, and our family has no comfort. Though I feel your loss, the Tome of Fates provides no insight to your sister's whereabouts. Ursa knows he witnessed her fate. Then why does he not tell you, Iron Dragon? There is mistrust between dragons and gods. If we save Ursen, he will tell us how to find Shen Tzu. Let me serve you, mighty dragons. I can reach Ursen, lead you to him before it's too late, for one drop of his blood. Your destiny is to guide us. 
The armies of Cathay must breach the Maelstrom and march into chaos. Balance will be restored to the world when Shenzhou is returned to you. Our goal is clear. To find the lost sister, we must hear the God Bear's testament before he passes into myth. I am the anointed guardian of the Great Bastion. Any breach brings great dishonor upon me. So prove your worth, mortal. Yes, Great Matriarch. There is indeed a rupture in the Great Bastion. The forces of Tsinch invade through the ruins of the Snake Gate and have taken the Terracotta Graveyard. Further along, the Bastion remains under threat from the Changer's forces, or, as you know him, the dread power Qianqi. Yet, despite the enemy assaults, there remain brave defenders ever loyal to you. Bolster them, and they will gladly confederate with a revered dragon. You will need such allies, for it is on the other side of the wall where the threat is strongest. The eternal siege continues, for the dark powers are never sated. And there, the orchestrator of this woe, Kairos Fateweaver. Face this demonic oracle, lest he bring down the Bastion. Fateweaver is insidious, and the invasion is only part of his plan. Rebellion festers in Nanyang's minds, under the Changer's malign influence. Punishment must be swift to reinforce your authority. Before we can hope to take the fight into the Chaos Realms themselves, we must bring harmony back to Grand Cathay. There is much to do. The Bastion can never be breached. Here we are. Let's uh, take that away. How they play, this uh, is both for the uh, northern provinces and the western provinces. Uh, the other uh, dragon starts down here somewhere. I don't remember exactly where. Somewhere down here. Um, harmony. All aspects of development in Cathay are aligned with yin or yang. Bonuses are earned and penalties are suffered based on the balance between the two. Up here, you can see that we have a, a yin-yang uh, meter or a harmony meter. Currently, we have three with yin, which means that we get 10 diplomatic relations with Cathay, 20 plus 20 growth. Uh, these these, penal, uh, these penalty, uh, bonuses and penalties apply to all your provinces and your faction on its entirety. Yang buildings are 5% less expensive to build. You get 5% more income from young buildings, and you get 5% less income from yin buildings. Now this is if you have 1 to 3 yin, and currently we have 3 yin. If this goes to 4 to 6, then you get uh, more severe penalties. Uh, you do get more income and uh, less construction cost for young buildings, but the yin buildings uh, give even less income, and then you lose 6 control, which is rather substantial. If you go, go below that, you you get this. 20% uh, less uh, construction cost for Yang buildings, 20% more income from Yang buildings, but minus 40% income from Yin buildings and minus 10 control. On the other side, you have Yang. Uh, it's the same here, uh, just vice versa. So it affects the income from Yang buildings and gives you income from Yin buildings and reduces the construction cost of Yin buildings and the controlled malice is the same. When you're able to achieve harmony, you get plus 20% diplomatic relations with Cathay, minus 20% construction cost for all buildings, plus 40 growth, plus 25% income from both Yin and Yang buildings, plus 8 control, minus 5 corruption in all provinces, and you also get the army ability Ancestral Warriors for all of your armies. Now, Cathay does not have 
any building that well there is one but it's it's a minor one uh it's the uh the skaven undercity detection building which is actually quite important in uh, in total war warhammer 3 i'll get back to that much later though but you want to try to keep this in harmony as often as possible i usually tend to end up at one of the sides but if i achieve harmony uh, i try my darndest to keep it there because yeah but it is not that difficult to to maintain the harmony um and we'll get back to that we have the wuxing compass which influences the flows of the winds of magic around the Cathayan homelands it's down here um can use it to uh bolster and empower uh, various things in uh inside of Cathay. notice that the uh, the wuxing compass only applies to provinces that are considered Cathayan. so any province that you have outside of Cathay, uh, as far as i'm aware uh the wuxing compass does not apply to those provinces so for instance if i had these provinces up here um the wishing compass would not affect those then there's the ivory ivory road uh we will have uh, caravans that we can send to um factions across the map um and uh that will give us a little bit of a additional bonus income uh and also some chances for uh battles and extra magic items as well Get our first mission. We need to engage the enemy of Zhao Han. Um, these guys have been uh, influenced by Jiang Ji or Zinch, uh, to rebel against us. Now, Gunpowder Road is the uh, the home province of uh, Miao Ying, uh, with Nan Gao as the uh, capital. And the rebels have taken both the mines of Nanyang and uh, the settlement of Nanli, which is in the um, Cathayan Desert, uh, also known as the Warpstone Desert. I'm sure you can see why it's called the Warpstone Desert. Yeah. The storm First of all, let me just quickly modify the camera settings. Um, I'm going to have the animation speed at fastest. Actually, let's uh, go back to normal there. And, um, Northern provinces, that's ourself fastest. For the allied factions, lords, we want to go high fastest. Off with heroes, enemy factions, we do the same. I'm not really that interested in watching all of the heroes move around the map. If they are of relevance to me, I'll notice them anyways. The Miao Ying's yeah. starting army is... Uh, quite nice. Um, everyone's starting army is quite nice, uh, really, but um, she starts out with a, a unit of Celestial Dragon Guard. She starts out with two units of Jade Warriors. She starts out with a unit of Peasant Long Spearmen. She has a unit of Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen, a unit of Peasant Archers, some Peasant Horsemen, and a Sky Junk. The Sky Junk, in particular, is a very, very, very interesting unit. We can currently recruit Peasant Archers, Iron Hail Gunners, and Peasant Long Spearmen in Gunpowder Road. Notice the icon here. So this is a Yang unit and this is a Yin unit. Um, and this does not affect the harmony, uh, your army composition. That would have been really harsh. So thankfully that does not affect it. But Yang and Yin units want to be in range of one another but we'll get back to that in a battle what does affect the harmony are the buildings so we currently have minus uh, or we currently have three yin now if i go into the buildings here you'll notice that these buildings do not have any icons this one does not have any icon this one does not have any icon nor does these the walls however you choose whether you want young walls or yin walls and it gives different garrisons. So this one would give more ranged units. And this one would give more uh, melee units. And then finally you have the infrastructure. Where you have a yin version. 
at a young version. So the young version of the labor conscri conscription bureau is here and the yin version is here. So that is the conscription bureau is uh, for uh, growth. This is the growth building chain. Uh, this one does minus 4% construction cost for all buildings, but it prevents construction of the tea parlor buildings. You can only choose one in each province uh, or rather, yeah, or in each settlement, I mean, sorry. So that one is for construction cost reduction. This one, it also gives 10 growth. So they give the same uh, basic bonus uh, of growth. But this one applies to income from all buildings instead of a construction cost reduction. Then you have the income, uh, the industry. Uh, these do not give the same. The young one uh, gives 300 uh, with a modifier. Whereas the yin one gives less income, but gives you a percentage modifier to trade income faction-wide. And finally, the conscription offices. You have the conscription office and the conscription field. Yang gives you recruit rank for peasant long spearmen and peasant archers. Whereas the yin one gives you casualty replenishment rate for armies. It also gives you 40%. Uh, 60% and 80% reduction of the uh, the units that this one gives you recruit rank for. Note that it says local armies. Uh, that's I, I, I was kind of tricked by that at first because I thought it meant local armies as in the entire region. But no. If I have a conscription office in Nangao, it means that any unit I recruit in Nangao will get plus two rank. But any unit that I recruit in Nanyang will not get that. And the same applies to the cost reduction of recruitment. It only applies to the settlement region, not the entire... Um, remember what these are called, but... Uh, I, th I thought they were called regions, but it only applies to, to the settlement itself, uh, as far as I can tell. Okay, that is a lot of talking and a lot of explanation. Um, we should also have a look at the technology, technology tree. The te technology tree is divided into a top and a bottom, where you have yang at the top and yin at the bottom. And it's divided into three sections. So most of these give one of each, but there's also a couple of them that give three. So this one would give three yang, this one would give three yin, uh, three yang, three yin. And I'm not sure if there are others in this section. No, I think there's one in each section that gives three. This one gives three, this one gives three. Yeah, there we have two that give three. Maybe there are some in the main here. Nope. But there's also the center line. You can go straight through the center uh, all the way to the end without getting any yin or yang, but that would not be a good idea. We're going to start out with the fletching mentors. Uh, plus 8% ammunition for peasant archer unit. It will also give us plus 1 yin, so we have 4 turns to get more yang. Not particularly interested in this right now. Hardened bamboo is also nice, but uh, this one is definitely the uh, the better one. The for celestial now. empire ever improves. Finally, before we go into the battle, the uh, Wuxing compass will get back to this. Um, it looks like this. It's really rather pretty. Uh, the uh, ivory road will get back to that as well. Uh, there is an a guide to how to use it and so forth here um, but as nodes and so forth but yeah uh, I'll, I'll get back to that uh, when we actually send uh, the caravan uh, which will be later on I will make my father proud and diplomacy diplomacy has also been improved um, in such a way that you have the quick deal here wind shaper now, if I wanted to have a non-aggression pact with the Imperial Wardens, uh, I can just... 
I can see that they want to have a, a, a non-aggression pact with me. So I can do initial Cafe diplomacy. Extends the hand of welcome. If I offer them that, they will also give me trade agreement and military access. But I can just click balance offer, which means they will give me a payment. Uh, vice versa. If they don't want to give me something and I click balance offer, it will have the exact number what I need to give them to get that. And if I try to do something that they don't want to do, or... Well, I didn't mean to do that. Natural authority. Um, so, for instance... Be on uh, guard. Did I actually declare war on them? If I did, I need to restart. Because I did not mean to declare war on them. No, I don't, I don't think I declared war on them. I am at war with the Decentral Lord and the Rebel Lords, but I'm not at war Celestial. with them. Good. Commander. So, say for instance, um, Military Alliance. If I wanted to have that with the blooded. Imperial Wardens, I can click Initial Diplomacy. This one is grayed Empire. out, because I, I don't have the necessary amount of money that they would want from me. Uh, you can also no longer pay someone uh, to join a confederation as you could in uh, Warhammer 1 and 2, uh, which I think is a good change. Windshaper. Lord Magistrate. Um, you should pay attention to who the various factions are at war with, because you will get modifiers if, if I make an agreement with someone that they are at war with, that will modify them into an unfriendly state. Let's start with a uh, non-aggression pact combined with trade agreement and military access the with Yuan Shan Fu with the Imperial Wardens and let's just ask them to pay me a little bit for it. Long live cafe. Indeed. The boss. City commander. The Celestial Loyalists will also offer uh, or agree to a trade agreement. We already have a non-aggression pact with there them from the start of. We'll add the military access and we'll also balance the offer and they will pay me a bit of Harmony cash is a too. Other than that, these are the only factions we know Fire. currently. So Cafe this Eternal. is what we are going to uh, be doing now. Harmony above all. Let's play out this battle. I could auto resolve this, but I want to show off the uh, the units as well. Besides, auto resolve would give me some losses, and I can fight this battle hopefully without getting any losses at all. You can channel magic instead of uh, gamble, used to be uh, the uh, the old. You risk a bit of the uh, power reserve. Um, to try to get more in your um, power. Um, I'm not entirely sure how this works. If it moves some of that down, or if it just removes some of that when you lose, I'm not sure. I haven't really paid attention to that, but I won't do that now. Stone and steel. So they don't have any cavalry, so... Put these guys here, and uh, the peasant long spearmen we can put a bit to the side. Uh, the archers are on that side, so we'll put the um, peasant horse horsemen up here. The uh, sky junk will put it there, Master of Tempest. and of course Miao Ying herself Crossbowmen. there. Crossbowmen have a range of 160. Peasant archers have a range of 140. Uh, what's coming? Spearmen. Spearmen are not really interesting. Move these guys up here. Let's Fair remove the us. guard stance on all of these units. This one can be guarding, and the uh, ranged units can be guarding. And of course, skirmish mode is up. Now this one is um, flying hellstorm rocket battery. 
and the might of Nankao, we can only prevail. Ready to defend. Now Miao Ying has a combination of life magic and yin magic. Lore of Yin is a really nice uh, lore. Uh, and of course, life is also a nice uh, lore. Now, you'll notice that it says heal per second 0.8%. They have changed all the uh, healing spells so that they do a percentage instead of uh, a set number. Send in the uh, cavalry now. She can also change into dragon form. Okay, we broke that one. Try to whittle them down a little bit more. For and now defense. the attack. My power is absolute. And they're broken. Mistress of Storm. Sent by Gairan. March for the Emperor. For the Emperor. With joy. Let's heal those. Ah, we did lose some of them. But not that surprising to be honest let's go into uh, dragon form or actually let's slow him down it is fated. with infinite pride cavalry the storm dragon Try to just whittle them down with the uh, ranged units. Dragon and now go for the general. Cavalry. Let's get these guys out of here before the uh, Lord Magistrate pops on over. Trees that are in the way are going to be a tad annoying. Dragon crossbow, bringing harmony. The AI is a little bit better now for at the um, for the defense. doing things Captain. properly. Dragon guard. It's not very accurate. Let's do that so you guys can see that as well. Got a rocket in him. But, as a reward. Keep uh, shooting the general with the archers. Now, let's halt all of these and make her hunt down the general for a little bit more loot. This army is going to be wiped out regardless, so it doesn't really matter if you do this, but you get a little bit more money if you uh, wipe out more units. She can only change to 
dragon form when you're not in this phase. The battle must not have been um, decided. Uh, she can change back from dragon form, but not into dragon form. There we go, decisive victory. Lost entire five units of the... or oh, five people of the unit that I'm least interested in, the Peasant Horseman. That is probably the one that I'm going to be uh, disbanding quickest of the units that are in the army, but it's useful for now. So we got 862 gold and 850 experience points. We can either execute them, gives us four leadership for five turns. We can venerate our ancestors, which will replenish our units, or we can pardon the captives, which will give us a 5% malice to casualty replenishment rate for one turn, but also gives us some gold. And in this specific case, I'm just going to go with a pardon captives. That means that we have succeeded in our mission. We got 1000 gold and an astromancer at Nangao. The next mission is to send that hero into our army, which would be my default thing to do anyway. So we also got a mission to recruit two new units. We also have a mission to restore the balance of harmony, which we are also going to do. So let's take Yutang Nanmen and uh, quickly have a look at his um, skills. He is a uh, Lore of the Heavens. So he gets the uh, Lore of Heavens uh, uh, spells. Uh, he can get the uh, War Horse, and you can also get a Wujing War Compass as a mount. This one is fairly good, uh, especially if you have many of them, but that will be for later on. Um, yeah, another thing. Uh, the Astromancers have Wound and Scouting, whereas the Alchemists have assassinate and something else but i don't remember what alchemists i also believe have reduced corruption whereas the astromancers have spread control Favored let's embed him in the army Fortune can be get a little bit more gold from that move her I up to the it. border itself and let Serve us recruit two end. units of iron hail gunners now, these are not that far off from the empire uh, units, let's see here. Select race. Uh, oh, look at dwarfs. So, dwarf thunderers have 22 ammunition, 145 range, and 19 missile strength, armor piercing. The 22, 145, 19. Uh, where is. And Gunners, 225519. As Cathay. And the Ironhell Gunners, 229036. So much higher missile strength, but lower range. Uh, they are quite crappy in uh, in melee. Uh, so you, you need to protect these guys. And then our building upgrade in Nangao. Uh, and I think we're going to go with growth. Uh, and since we need to get more young, I'm going to do, go with the Labour Conscription Bureau. My favourite combination is the tea parlour with the wares market. Uh, because the income from trade isn't really that um, substantial compared to uh, getting nearly 100 more gold. So, but for now, we'll go with the Labour Conscription Bureau here. Uh, I'll leave this building here for now, but I'm going to tear it down. We can get uh, peasant archers from the uh, garrison itself, and uh, peasant archers should be more than enough. Uh, and we want to keep our units uh, upkeep at a minimum. Finally, the thing that I need to address is this, the Great Bastion Threat. The Great Bastion has three gates, the Snake Gate, the Dragon Gate, and up here is the Turtle Gate. There are the Kurgan Warbands, which will keep assaulting the wall continuously. And the garrisons you get here are rather formidable. 
However, uh, if you defeat the Kurgan Warbands, uh, you lessen this thing. But if you allow it to go to 100%, uh, a massive horde of them will spawn outside of the wall, and you need to be prepared for that uh, if that happens. The game will warn you uh, with a notification before it happens. So that's the final thing in, in the Cathayan UI. These four are the... Um, the, the demon souls that you need to open the uh, the gate into uh, the forge where Bellacor is. So then, before we end the episode, we need to take a look at the caravans. The caravans can be sent to, to various locations. Say, for instance, we want to send the caravan here. Now, you can choose a different route. Currently, it'll take six turns, but I could move it... No, actually, you can't. If I go there... Oh, okay. Uh, the destinations we have would be Shattered Stone Bay. Um, it would be the Frozen Landing. It's Nov Josie, Castle Drakenhof, Erengrad, Altdorf, and Marienburg. And as far as I'm aware, you don't get any more destinations than this. You will have various incomes from the development of the settlement in question. Thunderguts, I believe that is Ogres. This, of course, is Chaos currently, or Norskens. Here is Sylvania, so that would be Manfred von Karstein. This would be Karl Franz of Reichland. This would be uh, Emil Corden, I think, of Marienburg. And then, of course, it's the Drugina Enclave, which is a, a Kislevian faction. Or Kislevite, I believe. Now, you can modify the cargo value. I'm going to go straight up to 1000. Uh, it gives more return. But pay heed to the journey time. So for instance, if we go to Altdorf, we'll get 4840 at arrival. However, the journey time is 10 turns. Uh, whereas 4660 would be 9 turns. 5000 would also be 10 turns. That's 500 per turn. Uh, this one is six turns, this one is five turns. And 5,000 versus 2,540, this one gives a better reward. This one is seven turns, this one is nine turns. So we'll go to uh, to the um, Norskans for now, because of purely based on, on that. The frozen landing it is, dispatch. And then the caravan appears. You cannot control the caravan directly, but you will control it in combat. When, not if, but when that occurs during the route, because we will have uh, things happening. You can see here that the overall threat here is high. Uh, as we discover the routes, uh, you will see these markers on the various uh, paths. So yeah. I think we'll end the episode here, um, a victory to Saber. because I think I've covered everything that is worth covering. This is kind of like a introduction to Cathay uh, at the same time as I'm playing. Uh, I might make an abbreviated version of this, how to, uh, what to uh, pay attention to when you play Cathay, but we'll see. There are might be other channels on YouTube that are more suitable for specific guides for Total War than mine. But well, I might make one. I, you never know. But with that said, if you have any questions or comments, uh, then uh, please do feel free to leave those in the uh, comment section. Uh, I will also be streaming Total War Warhammer uh, 3 on Twitch. Um, you'll find the link to that in the description. And... Uh, I'm not sure which faction I'm going to be streaming, but we'll uh, come back to that. Uh, it will probably either be Kislev or the Ogre Kingdoms. Um, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to see you all next time.